1. You're a 60-something dude, and you want everyone to know you're still a cool guy. Your Kid Rock t-shirt, your new balance shoes, and your flannel proclaim you as such. You sprawl in your chair, toothpick in mouth, elbow over the arm. Left foot out in the aisle, completely comfortable and in command. You address your server as coach, big fella, sport, and the like. You're chill about having to wait a few minutes, since the soup you wanted was still being perfected to its salty, fatty goodness. After all, you were waiting in the parking lot before the restaurant opened, and made jokes about how the place should just open whenever the customer shows up. But no biggie, you're a cool dude. You'll wait the extra five minutes while you scarf down your bread and slurp your water with a lemon and you're fairly tidy with the detritus from the many Splenda packets you slipped into said water. Once it's ready, you eagerly dig into your soup and your salad. Have a few refills, but nothing that crazy. Four soups isn't that much, is it? And three salads? And then the moment arrives. Bill. You're stuffed. You're satiated, and you're ready for a nap. All good. Your tab is $15, and you know you have it covered. You have a gift card and a coupon. You're in command. All is well in your world. Coach is gonna get quite the tip. $2.50? Pfft. 15% is for amateurs. You're a man about town. Coach is getting five bucks. You can do this, because you're a cool dude. And then, that whiny, snot-nosed, avocado-toast-eating millennial lets you know that your coupon has expired. And he cannot accept it. What? What in the tap-dancing frigging hell? Your vision begins to cloud. You're graying out with red along the edges. Every insult to your dignity, beginning with the time you wet yourself in third grade, continuing on to when Dad embarrassed you in front of all your friends. That time you got fired and Mary Jo left you. Comes creeping back like a... But wait. Wait. Calm down. Coach tells you he's super sorry. You feel sorry for Coach. After all, it's not his fault he's an idiot. It's like the participation trophy culture he's been brought up in. So you breathe deeply and ask Coach to get the manager. Manager Lady comes over with a smile. She's kind of cute. She looks a little bit like Mary Jo before she got all cranky and... Well, never mind. There seems to be a problem here, sir. How can I help? Oh, alright. It's still cool. I don't like being called sir. It reminds me of my dad. He was definitely not a cool guy, but I am. I can deal, you dick. Time to turn on the charm for Mary Jo. It used to work on her all the time. I just want to use my goddamn coupon. Mary Jo isn't having any of it. She smiles, but I can tell she has lashing snakes in her heart. Sir... This coupon expired back in 2015. Two. Okay. I have been dancing at a local dance school, and during lockdown, the owner bought the cafe that was next to the building. And so, while she was taking the time to refurbish the new cafe, she added an interconnecting door between the school and the cafe, so that the parents had somewhere to wait while their child was in class. This sounds irrelevant, but trust me, it's not. Now, I was hired last autumn, and originally was put on Wednesday and Friday shifts. But the day a Saturday was placed on my rota, all the other baristas made a point to warn me that there was no rest on these days, so I had to mentally prepare for the onslaught. So, when Saturday came, I instantly noticed the problem, 
which was the parents handle their children in... How do I put this nicely? Different ways. While some parents would make sure to have a bar of chocolate or chips so that they would stay at the table, some parents were a lot more lenient. Most of the time I can handle it, but there is one group of parents that really get on my nerves every week. Usually I can put up with their kids running around as they're usually in class most of the time. But last week, they really hit a new low. This past week, the group sat on a different table than their usual, which was next to a section with a really small walkway. The first set of kids came down at 10.30. I was waiting for my coffee to kick in at this point, eager to show their mams what new tricks they learned this week. They then proceeded to take up as much space as possible, throwing their arms and legs all over the place, making it almost impossible to give the table their food or hot coffee. During all of this, the parents cheered them on, letting me struggle not to burn their children. The second set of kids was closer to the end of the shift, so at this point, I was making sure to look busy while the owner was having their lunch, by cleaning tables in the back section, the one with the small walkway. At this time, one of the parents was grabbing beers and playing on their phone, not noticing their two tiny children deciding to play leapfrog in front of the back section. And the door. The only intervention I got from the parent was a tiny stop, which of course the kids ignored. So it was my job for the next half an hour to try and not trip over little children. So can I have some advice on how to handle these kids without having to deal with complaining parents? P.S. This was another family, but I would also like to mention that we had another child almost run into the kitchen and bar twice, almost stealing one of the chairs. They've had to remind the parents before regarding doing their child's hair or getting them changed, especially when we have full-length windows looking onto the street by putting notices in Facebook groups, but as soon as they're out there, they leave us to handle the rest. 3. So today, we only had about 5 or 6 servers on the floor, because 3 had called out. We all had to pick up an extra table, and we all were getting sat with multiple tables at a time. Was sat with one table, did my whole routine, got their salads, appetizer, checked in on them, brought their food, checked to make sure everything was looking and tasting good. One of them needed a refill, and I had to go make drinks for another table, so I figured I would kill two birds with one stone. Then I realized I got sat again. Knowing it would take me a minute or two to grab drinks and drop them off at separate tables, I approached my newest table to let them know I would be with them in just a minute. I should have just let them wait for me to be done with everything else. Because boy oh boy did I fuck up bad. The minute I reached the table to tell them I would be with them in a moment, one of them began to unpack how awful their day was on the verge of tears. Normally, I would tell a table I have to do something else and cut off the convo, but I had no idea how to react. I felt bad and didn't want to be rude and kept waiting for a break in conversation to get a word in. But they just kept going. I had zero opportunity to say a single thing. Finally, they let up after what felt like an eternity of internally panicking. I go back to the refill table to begin to apologize, and the guy said, We already got our refill. First we have a bad host. Now we have a bad waitress and literally scoffed and laughed. I have never deadpanned a guest like I have this. I don't know why it set me off so bad, maybe tone of voice. I've dealt with assholes, but something about this guy pissed me the fuck off. You know, we only have five servers on the floor right now, and we're all taking care of multiple extra tables than we normally do. 
but if there's anything else I can grab you, please let me know. I just stared at him. He asked for a box and a check, so that's exactly what I did. I got him a box and began to pull his check up on the table kiosk. Keep in mind these things let you pay at the table with a card. I'm paying with cash. So what, now we have to pay with card? No, you can pay with cash. Well, you're pulling it up on this thing, so I guess that means we have to pay with card. Sir, that's your check and total due. You can still pay with cash. I got the change and just ended up asking my manager if she would take it to them, because I was done dealing with them. Thank God I was able to catch another server who wasn't busy at the time to ask if they would please run drinks to my other tables before the refill fiasco happened. And thank God the one table waiting forever on drinks already ordered and were so kind. Refill table told my manager I was nowhere to be seen the entire time. Weird. I checked in on them and ran their shit. But they were right in earshot of teary eye table and in direct line of sight of me. I hate people sometimes. 4. If anyone else has worked in a strip club, you know you have to have a pretty strong personality. This event was after I had been working in the club for about two years. The night this happened, I was working as a shooter girl during the height of Alberta oil success, 2013, because the other girl called in sick. It's Friday night, it's a full house, music is pumping, drinks are flowing, and dancers are burning up the stage with wicked performances. Now, the club I was at, like most clubs in Alberta, are no touch. The bouncers are very diligent with this, but some things happen so fast it was hard to catch it all. As I was walking around with a full tray of bullet shots, I passed a guy sitting on pervert row. He pushed his chair back and turned it so he could get a better view of me walking by in my uniform, which that day was a red corset with booty shorts and four-inch boots. Now, I have a fairly plump rump, and he thought he would get a handful. Working in these environments gives you almost a sixth sense on when things are about to happen. As he grabbed my ass, I whipped around so fast, and a thought flashed in my mind. This is Sparta. Yep, you guessed it. I Sparta kicked him dead square in the chest with my four-inch boots. He went flying back, and the bouncers noticed the commotion. As they came over, I leaned over this guy and put my boot on his crotch. He was rattled, as one who had just got booted into next week would be. This is the part that I'm sure a bunch of people will hate. But if you've worked in the strip club and appreciate the hustle, you may or may not like this, but that's on you. I held the bouncers back, saying, I got this. I then turned back to the guy told him to take out his wallet and put a $20 bill in my boot as an apology for thinking he had any right to touch me like that. As he apologized, he took out a 50 and asked if he could stay in the club with his friends. My response was, keep your hands to yourself and tip the servers and dancers and we won't have a problem. To this day, still can't believe that happened, but that was the excitement of working in a strip club. Sorry, not sorry, if you feel offended by this. This is the hustle. 5. I'm a new hire at a busy restaurant. It's my first time working at a place like this. I've really given it my all every shift, though, and I'm happy to go out of my way to be helpful because the people that work there are just great people. Well, as I continued to work there... Little seeds of doubt became sown in my mind as I noticed how my superior behaves. It'd be a quick snap, but it'd catch me off guard. Then all I'd feel is anxiety about what happened. I'd feel talked down to, and suddenly, 
my catch-all role made me feel less like a wild card and more like a mule that the higher-ups put their burdens on. The two off-the-cuff employees I worked with then confirmed my suspicions, and it built and built, and then shit hit the fan. I made a thoughtless mistake, and I'm told, OP, you can't be doing that. That's not okay. And I say, oh, okay, sorry, I didn't know. And they go, it's common sense. And I say, if it was common sense, I wouldn't have done it, would I? It was a mistake. And they say, it's common sense. And boom. Moments later, I went to them and said, hey, I feel incredibly condescended by the way you just spoke to me now. And hell, that loose. Yelling match. As your manager, I can speak to you how I please, if it affects the business. Blah, blah. And through tears, yay go me, I go, sure, but you don't need to make me feel like a fucking dumbass, I didn't know. It was generally regrettable and forgettable for the fact that I hate crying when someone yells because I lose the ability to say what I want. But it concluded painfully and we resolved it somewhat, it seemed. Come to today, I see my fave off-the-cuff worker and I tell her what happened. And she eats that up. She's so proud of me. And she asks about it all throughout the shift. And it warmed my heart because she is looking out for me. She tells me what I do and do not deserve in a workplace environment. And I told her that it means the world to me as the underdog and she hugged me. I got hugs from two other co-workers too and I was commended for how brave I was. One of the older dudes tipped me out and said that I'm smart, hardworking, and if I'm in the market for a job, his wife is hiring. I was going to stick this out for a little longer, but I just received word that this boss, who actively shit talks about children and co-workers in front of me, talked about me to a co-worker when I left tonight. She stood up for me, and she said she loves me and I deserve a chance, and he rolled his eyes. I'm done here. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 209. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please do boob the like button, I very much appreciate it when you do. Right, and there's no other business today, I don't think. Nope, so we'll move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... And this goes thanks to my partner, Linux. Have you ever changed your favorite color, or has it always been the same? I can answer that very easily. My favorite color, and to those of you who have ever actually seen me, uh, this will shock you, is black. And it has always remained black but I have come to appreciate some other colors over the years, like purple. This will shock even more of you. And, uh, yeah, so black and purple go very well together. And just those two. No, I do like most colors, depending on what they're used for, but those are the kind of ones I identify with the most that make me feel the most comfortable. Please let me know what you think in a comment below. Color has been very much on my mind lately. I say this while wearing a tie-dye t-shirt. Um, not the most colorful person in the world, as I, well, as I just said. But I am going to be decorating at some point in the next two weeks. Uh, to start with, I'm just painting one wall, but I'm also hanging up wall panels in what is going to be my recording space, slash office. And the one wall is going to be green. I think I've mentioned that before. And I'm just trying to decide, settle on a color I want for the others, although they won't be getting done for a little while. The priority is just to get the equipment in there, get everything up and running, and get that one wall used, because that is a practical wall that can be used for work-related things. Because I've always wanted a green screen, so why not paint it? It's more practical for my purposes. I don't have to worry about adjusting it, I just have to worry about lighting it properly. As for the other walls, well, I was thinking maybe like a dark grey or something. don't want anything too bright and the wall panels themselves are black and purple so i think like a darkish gray but not like black black it would be a decent contrast it would work quite well as for the ceiling i think i'm going to end up putting the little those little foam tiles on there unless i find something better i might actually get more of the panels and just mount those to the ceiling that might be quite nice 
Well, we'll see what I come up with in time. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>